Uh, we have a bunch of G2 folks on who can jump in and answer any questions. Um, I'm going to just kick it off with a very brief intro and then uh, Leish and I will introduce ourselves and then we'll kind of get into it, um, get into how to oper operationalize intent data, um, which is what this session is about. So welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining. Um, this is our first uh, office hours that G2 has ever hosted, at least that I'm aware of. Um, and this is really open to everyone. This you can be a G2 customer, you can be a SaaS, you know, B2B marketer that's just interested in find, you know, wants to talk about intent data and any other topic that we cover. These things will be monthly um, and really open open to anyone, like we said. So um, the one thing I did want to mention is that you know we we use Salesforce. We can see who's registering. We know who's a customer and who's a prospect. Um, and we also have some crummy problems in our Salesforce instance where we just have like leads that aren't attached to any account, but that's another story. But anyways, um, so we do know that a good many of you today are customers that are on probably one of the paid versions of G2 where you can see things like intent data and review generation and stuff like that. A number of you are not. So you might have your product listed on G2, but you're not necessarily on one of the upgraded versions where you do have access to intent data and our incredible integrations hub and all that good stuff. So I just wanna say, and there's probably many of you that don't know, like you're on the marketing team and it's like, yeah, we're on G2. I don't really know who handles it. Um, the stuff we're gonna cover today does sort of imply that you have admin access to the back end of your G2 profile. If you don't, that's okay, but I do suggest that you kind of find out who on your marketing team does have that access and that you ask them to make you an admin so that you can log in and see all the incredible stuff. Um, if that person's gone, you don't know who they are, um, always feel free to re reach out to me, to Leash, to any of the G2 folks on this call, and we'll make sure that um, we can get you access to your profile and talk to you about what version of G2 you're on. Um, and having said that, I'll just quickly introduce myself. I'm Robin. I joined G2 only about seven or eight months ago now. Um, I have a background in demand generation and content marketing and stuff like that. Um, I joined G2 as a longtime fan and power user of G2 myself. So the company I came from, Better Cloud, we were using G2 intent data. Um, we, were, we were using basically all the bells and whistles that you have with G2 to kind of move the needle and hit our pipeline goals. And that's why I was so excited to come here and join uh, the team and tell marketers everywhere about all these great things you have with G2. Because I think a lot of marketers just think G2 is a place where you come and you list your product and you drive, you get reviews. But there really is so much more. And that's what uh, we're going to, part of what we're going to talk about today. And uh, Leash, could you jump in and do a quick intro? Yeah, for sure. I'm Leash in, um, Leash for short. Um, I have been at G2 for three years, um, came in just doing paid media. So paid social, uh, a little bit of PPC here, but I did that a lot more before. Uh, and then since then expanded to uh, all things demand gen and growth. So yeah, um, it's, been, it's been an interesting ride. As Robin said, there's been a lot of hiccups along the way, but um, I love the products that we have and uh, we do try and use it ourselves when it uh, is most appropriate. So we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later, but yeah, nice to meet you all and see y'all here. Yeah. And we have some other great folks from the G2 marketing team on this call. There's Tina who runs our G2 track product that a lot of people don't even know we have, but believe it or not, G2 has a SaaS management product that is more used by IT. So uh, Tina's our marketing manager. We have Claudia from the product marketing team. She's amazing. Sarah's here, who's our director of marketing operations and analytics. So if anybody has any deep in the weeds questions about our integrations, she's there. I think Misha, who's also on our MOPS team is here. Am I missing any other G2 folks? I think I, I covered everyone, but um, yeah, I'm in Brooklyn, New York. Leash is in West Lafayette, Indiana. 
Tina is in Miami, soon to be Nashville, Tennessee. Claudia, where do you live? I'm in Indy too. Oh, nice. Sarah's in San Diego. Um, we're all over the place and uh, and you should all totally feel free to reach out to us anytime. We're, we're not in sales, obviously. We are marketers just like you. We have pipeline goals, all that stuff. So um, let's get into it. I'm gonna share my screen. And there might be times that I log into my G2 and verge on showing like confidential data. And if I do that, um, the rest of the team will like slap me and tell me that I am sharing things I shouldn't be. But can everyone see my screen? We yes. good? Okay. Um, I should do present mode, but eh. Um, so we already kind of covered what Office Hours is. It's part of G2 University. And again, it's, it is open to customers and prospects. Everybody's welcome who's interested. Um, if you do want to, you know, drop in a question or have anything specific you want to chat about, please drop it in the chat. Um, like I said, we have MOPS here, we have product marketing, we have um, demand gen folks, growth marketers, so we should be able to cover it. If we can't, we'll definitely hit you up after. You should feel free to reach out to any of us, and the recording will be available on G2 University, and uh, we'll also upload it to YouTube, um, providing we can figure out who actually has login credentials for our YouTube channel, um, which is a neglected channel for us, but we're going to change that this, this fiscal year. Okay, so today we're going to cover intent data and how to operationalize it, how to take the intent signals that you get from G2 and um, use some of our integrations to really power your demand gen campaigns with these intent signals. Um, one thing, figure we should all leave here with a solid understanding, if nothing else, how to connect LinkedIn matched audiences with our intent signals so you can start powering some great campaigns on LinkedIn. And then we'll also take a quick cruise through our integrations hub, which again, you, you do need um, to have like access to my G2 to log in and see all this great stuff. But we integrate with things like Salesforce, Marketo, HubSpot, uh, Pendo, Medallia, Demandbase, Sixth Sense, Bombora, um, Salesloft, Outreach. It just goes on and on. So truly, you can take these intense signals and power uh, so many campaigns with, with, with them. So just to kind of like quickly level set, um, I think most marketers on this call, I, I took a look and we have a lot of demand gen people and growth marketers. I think we all know what intent data is and why it matters. Um, but really it helps you target like when your buyers are in market and run campaigns that can engage these accounts and contacts and, um, you know, kind of just drive toward a mentality of like embracing quality over quantity. So I know there's a lot of discussion about like, don't MQL everybody, don't put everyone in your funnel and pass them over to sales. But with intent data, you really have um, a much so sort of higher quali quality lead that you're passing through to drive conversations for sales. And then very quickly, just kind of what is the intent marketplace look like? There's first party, second party, third party data. Um, we're going to be talking about G2 intent data, which basically means um, you're looking at account information, not contact information, but account information of people who are looking at your product on G2, your profile and your product. Um, and if you're on the, I don't know, the, the super skew, I think it's called power, you can also see who's looking at um, your competitors in your category, and you can look at intent signals from your entire category also. So that's really important. Like the company I came from, we didn't necessarily have a ton of traffic to our profile. So we were buying um, intent signals for our category and for our competitors. So we could see every company that was looking at every um, competitor in our category and also every company that was looking at our um, at our category and from there we could really do kind of like amazing things and I'm going to hand it over to Leash who's going to jump in um, 
and kind of talk a little bit about LinkedIn matched audiences, which is one of the many integrations we have in our hub. And so if you are, if you do have intense signals coming in from G2, you can uh, integrate that with LinkedIn matched audiences and retarget those companies. So take it away, Leash. Yeah, for sure. So LinkedIn is one of the ways that you can like operationalize our buyer intent data. And um, I think something that we've learned personally, and I mean, so here's some examples from Robin's company as well. But um, I think the, the thing to note is that it works best when you time um, the offer properly with the kind of intent signal that you're getting. So what I mean by that is Robin talked about how you have category intent data or you have folks who are actually visiting your profile and that gives you a different message. So if, if they're visiting your category, likely they're just researching, et cetera. They're not quite ready to hear like about your product in a probably in, in like a demo environment, but it is kind of a time to educate them. And so, you know, for accounts that have visited the category, we tend to use something more like an educational ad. So we give them a playbook or informational ads and we can leverage LinkedIn to do that and match the accounts there. And so uh, we're kind of like filling in the gaps where we don't have people's email addresses to target exactly on other ABM platforms. And so what this allows us to do is actually get in front of the audience that is researching you or researching your category. And then when you go down to the account level, if people are visiting your, your actual profile, that's when you could say that they have higher intent. Um, they're probably past researching just your category. They're looking specifically at your page. And so um, things like offering a demo request or a free trial, that kind of um, piece of content tends to work better with that. Um, and what we've seen is that when you time the content or when you like match the content to their level of intent, it works a lot better. Um, we've tested kind of different variations within G2 as well, uh, where we've offered demo requests or whatnot, and it just wasn't, it didn't match the right category, uh, or sorry, it didn't match the right kind of intent. But when we did zoom out and think about, hey, what are folks interested in when they're looking at our category? Um, what are they ready for? And we matched um, our pieces of content to that. Uh, that's what really helped. So uh, we have another example that I want to point us to. It's for our track product. And just want to shout out Tina and um, hand it over to her actually to quickly run through how we're using it there. Hey, y'all. So thanks everyone for joining. Um, I'm actually going to be letting you guys know about two campaigns that we ran for the track product, one of them that worked really well and one that uh, not so hot. <laughs> but in the measure of full transparency and to disclose what's been working for us. So uh, Track is a G2 product. It is a SaaS management platform. And our persona is mostly going to be anyone that works in finance or IT. It's a pretty niche uh, group of people that we're trying to target. That being said, we've been running a series of different experiments to figure out which of these uh, LinkedIn ads would um, would resonate the most with these uh, this particular audience. And so on the left-hand side, this is actually a retargeting campaign that we did. And so anyone that was going through our buyer intent that was matched over onto um, on the LinkedIn side of things, we also made sure to include all their big exclusions. So none of our competitors were included. Um, any job titles that didn't necessarily jive with what we were looking for, they were excluded as well. And if they went to our track they checked out the G2 track website and then uh, were matched over, then they would just get this particular G2 ad um, on their LinkedIn. And that was probably the most successful one that we've had in terms of all of our retargeting efforts. It drove a lot of traffic back to the G2 site and we're still trying to see how many demo requests came in, but it was one of our more successful campaigns, something that I'm definitely gonna be replicating in the future. Um, and then on the right-hand side was, was our not so great campaign, but still, mighty <laughs> in its efforts. And so this was uh, the same kind of audience, another you know retargeting campaign using our LinkedIn matched audience, but it was for a content download. And so we were driving um, people over to download this next piece of content. We were thinking, you know, hey, maybe it's going to be more of a top of the funnel thing. We'll get some form submissions and then we'll pass that over to the BDR team as people that are particularly interested because they visited our track website and they download this piece of content. Um, I wish I could tell you it was just as great as our first campaign, <laughs> but again, these are um, different experiments that we've been running on our side 
you know, on the track side, you utilizing our own G2 product to see like, okay, like what's really going to resonate. And if there's anyone out here that is also marketing to any finance or IT people, I would say stick with the retargeting ads, maybe not so much on the content downloads, but interested to hear if anyone else has other opinions when we open up for Q and a, um, yeah, yeah, that's our track overview. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Tina. I think it, it is so important when you're talking about like intent data in general, whether it's coming from G2 or Bombor, where, wherever you're getting it from, that you map um, a campaign to the level of intent. And with G2, which is really taking intent signals, not from all over the internet, like people searching things or hitting certain websites, it's really all the intent that's on the G2 platform. So if they're looking at your product profile, there's a good chance there's some higher intent there. If they're checking out your category, it's a good opportunity to educate them. If they're looking at your competitors, then you should totally, you know, feel free to come out and say, why would you choose, you know, in the case of my old company, Better Cloud over Okta and things like that. So it really does become, um, to really capitalize on these intense signals, you almost have to have like the right offer, the right message, the right piece of content um, that to map back to the level of intent that you're seeing. And um, in case of Better Cloud, we were using Rollworks, we were using Marketo. So we, we would um, serve display ads. We were actually spending quite a bit on LinkedIn advertising every month. And so for anyone, any marketing team that is uh, earmarking ad spend for LinkedIn, and you're out there sort of targeting by job title or by company size or by whatever, I would um, definitely suggest that, you know, you do that and you try retargeting um, some of the companies that are looking at you on G2 and just do a side by side comparison of how those campaigns perform. Because if if people are researching on G2, there's a good chance, um, you know, they're, they have some high intent and there's pretty much no way unless your marketing campaigns really are pretty bad or they just don't, you know, resonate at all that, that you won't see some higher conversion from those uh, campaigns that are retargeting um, uh, views on G2 or any intent signal for that matter. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and just come back to reality for a sec. Um, uh, Claudia, have you been kind of look, monitoring the chat I, to see what's coming in? Yes, I have. And we have our very first question from Kate, Caitlin Caswell. Caitlin, I don't know if you want to come off mute. If not, I'll just read it for you. Oh, yeah, sure. I, yeah. Well, um, go ahead. Go ahead, Caitlin. So I was wondering for any of these campaigns, did you ever layer in like tech stack targeting as well? So like beyond like excluding competitors or whatnot, are you have you also targeted like those with competitors installed? Yeah. So I, I can take that one because we, it, at least at my previous company, Better Cloud, part of our like ABM strategy was really identifying our top accounts by their tech stack. So we knew that if it was a company that had, um, you know, at least 10 SaaS applications across their environment, they would be like a top uh, account for us. And so we would run campaigns we, we would first tag them in Salesforce as like tier A account by tech stack. And then we would run um, different kinds of campaigns, not necess- LinkedIn, not so much because you can't really target by tech stack on LinkedIn, but we would definitely be using the um, sales loft integration and have like customized SDR outreach go out to those accounts that were tagged as top accounts by tech stack and make some very like sort of customized outreach to those accounts that were checking us out on G2. Did that answer your question? It did. And it kind of led me to another one that maybe we're getting to in a minute is, are we going to be going over the uh, buyer intent and like outreach or sales loft integrations at all today? Not in a ton of detail, but do you have a specific question? Oh, I just haven't really explored it. So if it's a general overview, that'll probably answer my questions. (laughs) Yeah, no, totally. So there's a ton of integrations in the hub. Um, why don't I 
is I wonder how many folks are actually interested in, in if I log into the back end of my G2 and show you the integration hub, but sales loft and outreach are uh, two of just many, many, many. And um, what you can do, depending on your instance, um, uh, Caitlin of, of, of sales loft and outreach is just definitely like trigger um, cadences or sequences out of those applications from your SDR team to kind of retarget those accounts that are looking at you on G2. Um, if anybody else, I mean, is is using sales loft and outreach integrations, feel free to chime in. But at the at the very least, that's what we were doing at Better Cloud would be using the sales loft integration to send um, triggered like cadences from our SDR team, and and they would be kind of more. Um, in that case, you know, not really very one to one, but still very powerful because we knew that those companies were looking at us. Oh, I see what you're asking. Okay. Sarah, at at Sendoso, were you guys using were you guys using the sales loft integration? We actually what we did at Sendoso was we would write to Salesforce and then we would trigger based on intent. So when a company was surfacing an intent, we would create rules in our we use outreach at Sendoso. We would create rules saying like if they had intent and that target title was marketing, for example, demand gen was a high priority ICP for us. We would put them into a sequence that was really specific to demand gen marketers and, and surfacing intent. There's a, there's tons of automation you can do within uh, platforms like sales loft or outreach or Groove, whatever you use. Uh, we leveraged it a lot for intent specifically to make sure that those people were getting the messages that marketing wanted them to get to. And then we would allow the SDRs to customize it with, uh, you know, specifics about the company or what their interests were, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Adam, um, Adam's asking a question, which I feel like is kind of another, maybe another MOPS question. And I think we should have a little disclaimer here that um, Sarah is much more on the Marketo side of things. And so am I. Uh, we're both Marketo certified and um, less expert experts in HubSpot. Having said that, G2 is on HubSpot, um, which is a bit, <laughs> a bit of a nightmare for us, but um, <laughs> we are yeah. migrating over to Marketo now, praise be. Um, we're keeping HubSpot. HubSpot is a, is a partner of ours. We love HubSpot. We're keeping them for our CMS, but um, moving over to Marketo and Visible for everything else, like lead scoring, routing, automation, attribution, all those things. And uh, so we're probably a little less um, HubSpot centric, but Sarah, can you see Adam's question about the G2 integration that creates visitor accounts in HubSpot? Yeah, I can absolutely see that question. And um, just for anyone who doesn't see it, what, what Adam's asking is, is there a way to filter only for accounts to be created in your HubSpot that are within the ICP that you set up. Unfortunately, that's not a functionality that we have today with the G2 integration with HubSpot. The only thing that comes to mind to me, it, just based on the inability to control what types of accounts are being added, is that you can probably create like a workflow of some sort that says, you know, if someone gets added by the G2 integration and they have certain criteria in which you don't think that they're ICP for you, you can probably create instances where you can auto delete the accounts or run batches or something like that. But unfortunately, Adam, there's no way to do that on the G2 side. Cool. Um, I, there's another question about the sales loft integration. Is anyone, I wonder if anyone's on outreach, but I think they pretty much uh, function in the same way. Um, what else can we get into for sales loft since there seems to be some interest in that? I wonder, let me share my screen. And now you're just gonna watch me awkwardly navigate to my G2. Um, okay, this is the back end of um, my G2. So I'm, I'm assuming probably most folks on this call 
either already have access to their uh, MyG2 or they um, have seen this before. If not, um, certainly find out how you can get access to it. So down here is the integration hub. And this gives you an idea of all the incredible things you can integrate with. When I was at Better Cloud, we had um, LinkedIn matched audiences. We just started with Pendo, where you could actually generate reviews automatically through the Pendo and G2 um, integration. We're using RollWorks. We had Salesforce, of course. Um, we had Slack. Uh, we had sales loft and uber flip we were using uber flip to create like abm customized content experiences so we were using that one also um let me find sales loft claudia am i not seeing it the sales loft ah, it's right there yeah okay um i don't if this this is showing up as active in our instance, but um, that could just be because someone's using it for sandbox. Um, we're not actually using it. We're not on sales loft at G2. So um, anytime you want to navigate to the integration hub, there's usually a little bit of information here on what it can do and how to set it up. And I think um, if you run into any technical difficulties, there's a, a whole world of support at G2 where I think you get funneled to like a support team and they can help you with any technical issues. And if you want to kind of ask more marketing ops centric questions or have, you know, get ideas on campaigns you can run, you can certainly reach out to us anytime. But um, I'm curious to know how many folks are actually using the sales loft integration. Can, can, is it possible to do the hand raise thing? Is anybody? Maybe a better question is, how many folks are using any of the integrations? You got one, two, three. Cool. Three, yeah. Okay. Four. I wonder, okay, cool. Um, and for how many folks, I should have done a poll, I realize that now, uh, we'll change that next time. But how many folks didn't even know that that this exists, that there's all these um, integrations with your tech stack with G2 intent data? Okay, interesting. Okay, that that's kind of what I suspected because I, I feel like um, when when I was a customer of G2 and not actually working for G2, um, we had an awesome account manager who told us about a lot of this stuff, but some of it we just kind of had to find on our own. It's like, oh, let's drive more reviews. Okay, we'll, we'll do that. And that improves your position in the in your category, obviously, but then it was sort of like, let's log in and actually see what some of the traffic is to our profile and who these companies are that are looking at us. And then what is this integration hub? And we just sort of stumbled on a lot of it. And I'm kind of feel like a lot of marketers don't even know about that. Wouldn't you say that's true, Leash? Yeah, I, <laughs> I think like in experience of chatting with other companies, whether on like, customer success calls or whatnot and helping with like even our LinkedIn matched audience integration. That was like a new thing for a lot of folks um, when it first came out. And then again, like six months, six months later, and then like even now, I think it's become something that um, is there for people to leverage, but not everyone actually realizes it's there or uses it to its full potential. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I'm I did see a question from Kimberly asking about um, G2 and sales loft when we're talking about account level data. And I think that's a question we get a lot. And, and, um, and I'm going to kind of let Sarah and Leash take that one. But I will say part of uh, the power of the LinkedIn matched audience and, and those types of integrations are you can then, like, let's say for Better Cloud, one of our top 
prospects was Shopify. We were, were just, they were like ABM to the max for us. We would all try to like go in and get Shopify. But um, if we saw an intense signal coming in from Shopify, either looking at us or a category or a competitor, um, and we also had the Slack integration. So me and the demand gen team and sales and customer success were all in that Slack channel looking at these intense signals coming in and we would figure out how to action off of them. But um, with the LinkedIn matched audience integration, you can then retarget like the whole IT team at Shopify and serve content that um, is meant to get, you know, downloads and things like that. So you start to, to kind of build out your contact list at that account. So maybe we only had two or three folks from Shopify in our database from their IT team, but then we would use the LinkedIn matched audience integration and use LinkedIn lead gen forms, which converted really well for us and get the, you know, kind of more IT contacts in our database from Shopify. And then we would start to lean in and do uh, SDR outreach and things like that. Um, Sarah, do you have any, what are your like MOPS pro tips on how to, how to deal with kind of like getting account-based data more to the contact level so that you can action off of it in tools like sales loft, Marketo, stuff like that? Oh yeah. Uh, I'm a, I'm a big believer in lead to account matching and conversion of leads to contacts and matching into the account when you know you already have the account in Salesforce and it's a target account for you. When you do that, you can then align your account-based data with your contact level data and then automate sequences or nurtures or ads, whatever you want to do. Um, but I find that that's the best approach in order to make sure that you can combine those two data points. And then from there, you, you normally know, like, you know, someone's researching us. We, we know who our ICP is. You know, we know marketers are our target account, our target prospect. So from there, we would then define in outreach, like, hey, we're actually going to add folks that have intent who are marketing titles. And those are the people we want our BDRs to reach out to. Robin, I see we have another question in the chat um, regarding adding, is there a way to add recommended leads as contacts to the HubSpot record created by the G2 integration? Um, I'm just reading through it myself. And I think this is another one I'm gonna pass off to Sarah. And if we don't, if we don't know the answer to some of these, we'll definitely like track it down and get back to you. Um, if I'm if I'm reading this correctly, I think maybe I can explain. Does it yeah, I mean yeah, basically yeah. what we're seeing is I have you know IBM showing up as a as an account with buyer intent on G2. So what the G2 integration did is created IBM in, a, in our CRM, great. But, you know, IBM is a big company and it, our, our SDI is not going to call everyone at IBM trying to find whoever was the person who had the intent. Actually, I mean, so there are recommended leads on the right uh, from Clearbait, I guess, um, that mm -hmm. are identified in the G2 account, so this is a good starting point. I would love these contacts to be created in HubSpot so that our, our, our SDR can actually follow up with them. But I couldn't find a way to do this. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure to understand exactly. Actually, it, it confuses me about the whole concept of buyer intent, actually, because knowing that someone at IBM expressed intent is useless. It's too broad. I mean, there's, I mean, even if I kind of narrow down based on our ICP and buyer personas, it would be still like hundreds and hundreds of people that we'll have to contact. So it doesn't really help. And we, uh, by the way, they're already on our target account list. So, you know, it doesn't really help to know that they're on the mark. So yeah. really like the recommended leads is what I'm interested in when I'm- right. in Yeah, as, as marketers, I, I think as marketers, that's, that's true of all of us. You know, the, even the company I came from, Better Cloud, we don't care about all of IBM, we care only about IT at IBM. And at G2, um, we don't care about HR at IBM, we care about the marketing team at IBM. That's who we're marketing to. And that's why um, we kind of wanted to leave you today 
if nothing else, like with why something like the LinkedIn matched audience integration can be so powerful, because you can then set up that integration in my G2 LinkedIn matched audience. And so it'll add on the LinkedIn side, IBM, but then in your IBM ad account, or sorry, in your LinkedIn ad account, you would be filtering by job title. So it would be IBM for, you know, obviously the account, the company, but you'd add, you know, job function is IT or job function is marketing on the LinkedIn ad side. And that's why it becomes such a powerful tool because now you know that um, you are, you know, you're showing ads in the feed and Rollworks also. Rollworks was really powerful for us that way also because once we knew, you know, IBM was looking at our category, looking at us, looking at our competitors, we could then filter by job function is IT, IBM is the account, and we'd be covering them in their LinkedIn feed on, you know, all over the internet with Rollworks display advertising. And we would map our offers and our content back to that. So, so we would sometimes just do straight up lead gen where it's like download the guide. And sometimes it would be come back to our website, explore our blog or join our community. And for a company like IBM, which is obviously, you know, massive enterprise account, it's always a longer game anyway. It's not such a transactional retarget. Um, they request a demo, you know, miracles happen. It really is kind of like a longer engagement play where you're retargeting the entire IT team at IBM on LinkedIn uh, with display advertising, with email outreach, with, you know, Sendoso and digital gifting worked in. And that's eventually how you bring them into a meeting, if that answers your question. Yeah, so yeah. I don't, I, I think it has to be, you know, you have the intense signals, you know that IBM, and you can probably assume if they're looking at, you know, SaaS management, or they're looking at marketing, whatever the category is, that it's probably your persona that you want to be retargeting. And then you just have to be really smart about how you go after them and do really engaging ad creative content offers. And, um, and that's a, that's a longer game, but you will um, definitely see quality over over quantity with those types of plays. So is it fair to say that intent data will be most useful in uh, com at companies where the ICP uh, is very well defined at the actually the job title level where you can kind of reliably retarget people on LinkedIn based on job titles or any kind of attributes accessible on LinkedIn? Uh, first, because for us, for example, it's actually difficult. We, we've done an analysis of our job titles and it's all over the place. Uh, we've got a lot of frontline buyers and they don't have titles. So for us, it's hard to kind of retarget purely based on, on job titles. We have to uh, retarget. What, what is it for you? Is it, is it more like industry or what, what is your, your target? We are targeting, um, you know, typically people who are in the operations. Uh, department uh, and typically frontline workers, you know, people who are like uh, store managers, uh, regional managers, uh, you know, store operations. But you know, mm -hmm. th th those, those titles are are very squishy, and mm -hmm, people mm -hmm. use them very loosely. Um, so it's 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 hard for us to precisely retarget those folks on LinkedIn. Do you know um, where where are you kind of? putting your content in your in your ads out, what channels do work for you? Where do you try to reach those people today? For us, it's been, it's been Google, um, you know, both SEO and SEM, that has been the most mm -hmm. effective because the intent is very precise and expressed in a way that we can, that is very actionable for us. Mm -hmm. Our LinkedIn has been a very big challenge uh, to mm -hmm. find our audience based on job titles and ICP match because they're, they're just, just hard to find. Yeah, but that's great. So, but at SEO, SEM is working for you. So you're creating content that does bring people to yes. your website and maybe it doesn't convert them at that moment, but they come, you know, they come back, you can retarget and you will convert them ultimately and bring them into your funnel. And then I would imagine, I'm not sure what your forms look like if you are collecting job title, but 
one, even with SEO and SEM, if you're doing a great job of that and you're bringing people in and they're converting eventually, you must um, be able to kind of have a sense of their, if not their job title, their job function or what area they sit in in the company. And then LinkedIn does become pretty powerful and RollWorks too and other display ad platforms like ad, you know, or demand base or something like mm -hmm. that, where you can start to open it up and not just go by job title, but more like job function. But um, I, do, I am glad you brought up, you know, of course, SEO and SEM is so important and every marketing team should have that in their strategy and, and paid, you know, of course, paid search also where you really are capitalizing on people who are searching something, you know, in that moment. So, um, that's great. And I hope that I hope that answered your question. Or at least gave you something to kick around. Yes. I, uh, <laughs> I like the idea of uh, taking the I mean, we've done this analysis of job titles, but I, I like the idea of like actually doing it more precisely from our PQRs and you know, like, all the kind of inbound leads we get and kind of reinjecting this into into LinkedIn, that could be a way to, to improve our campaign. Yeah. And that's not, that sounds like something fun to to solve for too. Uh, Robin, I think we had another somebody else had their hand raised and then put it down, so I'm not sure if they actually had a question. I think it was William Chen. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are you guys finished with that with that uh, train of thought? I could just expand. Yeah. On that. Bring it. Bring it on. Good. Come on. So similar to uh, what Francois was, I guess, talking about, which is just like ad addressing like. Um, intent data is for the account, but would love to drill down and just find those leads or I guess our personas or I, our ICP that we'd be interested in targeting. Um, is there a way that you know of how to, uh, you know, um, I guess operationalizing that intent data to, we, we use Zoom Info as our enrichment platform to, you know, get Zoom Info to auto enrich for specific personas and then add them back to our that's our sales force so that our reps could target them uh, so that, you know, we could add them into specific LinkedIn ad campaigns, stuff like that, to just automate that process instead of having it, you know, we, we notify the rep that there's intent. They have to then go self-source those um, ICP uh, contacts for us. Mm -hmm. In terms of Zoom Info enrichment, I know they do have some auto capabilities. What I've always done in the past um, with Zoom Info is uploading lists. To be honest with you, like I would grab company lists that we wanted to enrich with contacts and then I would add what titles we want to add and I would push them into Salesforce. Um, I'm not quite sure in terms of auto adding contacts, to be honest with you, like I've never personally done it, but I have done the list upload feature in which we could append contacts to those accounts. Okay. Yeah, that's sort of where I'm at right now. If I wanted to leverage Zoom Info, but yeah, yeah. I uh, we we do use Zoom Info at G two, um, and I'm starting to get the reins on on working with them. I've I haven't worked with them in a really long time, but uh, I can definitely ask our rep, and I talk to him pretty much every day, so I can absolutely talk to him, and, and I'll reach out to you with the answer. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Thank yeah, you. For sure. Cool. Um, I also wanted to point out that Rachel is on this call. I'm sorry I didn't shout you out earlier, Rachel. She's on the product marketing team with um, Claudia. And Rachel actually is new to G2, but joins us, um, was previously with Bombora, uh, who's a partner of ours. Um, G2 integrates with Bombora. But if anybody has, hi, Rachel. If anybody um, has any questions for Rachel, she's awesome also. And I wanted to introduce her now as like a contact, even after this call, if anyone has questions, feel free to reach out to any of us. Um, Claudia, did we cover most of the questions? Is there anything else anyone I is think dying so. to talk I don't, about? I don't think we have anything else in the chat, but if anybody else has thought of something, feel free to either raise your hand or put it in the chat. Yeah. Um, I Hi, I'll turn my camera on while I'm asking. <laughs> hi. I'm so sorry if you already talked about this, um, but I am curious to know how we can build, like I get that it integrates with um, Sales Loft and it's great that we can put it in there. And like, 
I think right now we are doing, um, I actually don't, we're not doing persona cadences to follow up on G2 and 10 accounts. We're doing like use case cadences, but it's like a pretty manual process. Like I think our MDRs have to go through and like, I, I feel like they're, I'm actually not entirely sure of the whole process, but I know that there's no like automation right now based on what the accounts viewed. And like, I, we're an e-signature platform. So there's a billion other e-signature platforms on G2. Mm -hmm. And like, I think we have like some really quality data, um, that shows like competitors that accounts are looking at. And I'm wondering, like, can we automate like an activation of that on like that granular of a level, like this account compared you to, you know, I won't list the competitors, but X, Y, and Z. And like that, like, instead of like MDRs having to figure that out, like based on that, like it can trigger into a specific competitor cadence or, um, something like that. Cause I think right now we're just like looking at like, Oh, yeah. they have in 10 accounts. I don't think our MDRs are even in the actual platform. I think they're just getting like a Slack notification. So I feel like it's not very sophisticated, but yeah, um, no, the, you can have nice things. You, you can do that. You can have that level of, um, customization based on, uh, if, if you have, I should, qualify this by saying again i'm not in sales you know i don't i don't know what version of g2 anyone is on on this call but if you're if you have that um version of g2 where you can see your category and your comparisons and your competitors intense signals the answer is yeah you can totally do that and leash and i were having a conversation just yesterday actually he came from I hope you don't mind me saying this, Leash. Yeah, if, go ahead. Okay, he he came from a company called Copper, which was which is in the CRM category. You've never seen a noisier, like, yeah. crazier grid than the CRM category. And it's like, what on earth do you do if you're in a category with like a million other players and Salesforce is in there and they have like a million reviews and there's no chance you you can get there. Um, you know, and and to some degree, we were in this situation with Better Cloud too, being in a category with like Okta. I mean, um, that's why the intense signals were so important to us to see. Okay, maybe we can't. Maybe our number one competitor isn't necessarily Okta, or in Copper's case, it's not necessarily Salesforce. But there are probably some smaller players in that category that very much are your competitors and your um, more realistic, you know, prospects for you, right? And Mm -hmm. so probably like a good strategy would be to figure out like, what are my top five or whatever it is, competitors that are realistic competitors for me in my category, get those intense signals and trigger really amazing campaigns, whether it's SDR outreach or LinkedIn, you know, ads or roller, do all the things, do all of them and just be like, this is why you should, you know, this is us versus them type uh, competitor campaigns and come out with like, you know, there are absolutely like three reasons why we are your number one choice over, you know, this one or that one. And you can personalize to that degree um, from that in, intense signal coming in. And those can be some of your, you know, really most meaningful campaigns. Right. I think that's a, that's good advice to just focus in on like a couple competitors instead of like taking the approach. Cause we see so many different competitors that everybody is looking at. Like every account is looking at like three, four different competitors and like, it's too hard right. to <laughs> get it in there, but like maybe yeah, no, you don't. just like three, and then we could activate that sales loft cadence with like, like make the trigger. They looked at X competitor, send them into this, this cadence. Absolutely. That's right. That's, that's absolutely it. I mean, you'll drive yourself insane and lose more sleep than we as demand gen marketers usually do when you, when you look at that, that whole world. I mean, and some of our customers have run amazing campaigns that are like, okay, we're not Salesforce, you know, but there's every reason in the world why, you know, we're, you're, we're the number one choice for you. Um, and, and those can be really powerful. So I would, as a strategy, um, even if you run it as an experiment over a quarter or two, 
uh, pick the three that you think, you know, are really your best bets and, and um, go after those. <laughs> no, I don't get sleep. I don't know about anyone on this call. We, we do not get sleep. <laughs> Who who else has a question that we can? I see uh, Milan has a, her hand raised up, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. My name is Milan, um, and we're a G two customer. We have like the power plan, so we have access to all the different um, data. And I guess my question is like, sometimes it can be you know a little bit overwhelming, right? Because we have you know who's looked at your category, who's looked at you, who's looked at your competitors, and we have all these different options. So. You, you mentioned a couple use cases, and I think that I like that you guys included one, you know, a campaign that failed, um, because I think arguably that's just as, you know, informative as, as one that succeeded. And I was wondering if you guys have like, like somewhere where you have more use cases of campaigns that worked and didn't work um, that are like public or, or like what would be kind of the best way for me, you know, we've just, we just started our account. Um, we're just kind of figuring out our profile, like, would be the best way to figure out how to run kind of the most effective campaigns you um, should just uh call us up and talk to us okay, okay. we can have a, a private um session with you no seriously uh we're always happy to help like brainstorm um we do have case studies uh which i should now hand over to rachel and claudia from the product marketing team we do have a lot of case studies we can share on what our other customers are doing um, G2 University is now recently coming online where there's tons of content where you can get ideas and inspo for what other people are doing. And for real, you you could always just reach out to any one of us in, in chat and we're happy to, you know, brainstorm campaign ideas with you and things like that. Yeah, what I would add to that is like definitely reach out to your CSM and let them know that, hey, you're just getting your account up and running and give them the specifics of why you're trying to accomplish and the goals and let them know like, hey, I attended the office hours. Robin said I could chat her up and they will tap us and we can set up a call with you and your CSM because in that way they'll get all that information because they're the ones that are going to stay with you for the rest of the year and will be available all the time. So making sure that you give them that information of what you're trying to accomplish and let them know that you want us to join the call, like Robin, Leash, Tina, myself, and we'll be more than happy to jump on and help you get everything up and running. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah and then yeah. just to kind of add on to all of this, like it's a lot of what we learned is really through experimentation, right? Like it was basically just like, hey, let's try this creative, let's try this ad, let's try this copy, let's A-B test all of these things against each other, let's add in more exclusions this time. You know, it wasn't necessarily this like, linear process where it was like oh this is what we're going to try and then this definitely worked and then this didn't it was a this worked this didn't All right what do we learn from that let's apply it to the next one and just continuously having the space to evolve and then once we you know it took at least i would say from tracks perspective a solid quarter of just launching and trying and experimenting with different things before i was able to say okay this for sure is the best performing campaign that we've had over this quarter with these specific job titles. And it's the one that's consistently has resonated the most. Um, so I would say my own, uh, definitely feel free to reach out. We can always brainstorm, but also allow yourself a little bit of grace because it's not gonna be one and done. Like, yay, this worked, like, <laughs> right? Like, that's exactly why I was able to give you examples of like this, this was not the vibe. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yes, and you're right, Claudia. I for everybody that's a customer here, you do have a CSM, and I should have mentioned that. Um, we're like down to like talk anytime, but yes, you probably do have a, a an account manager that's also like awesome and able to help. And if they can't, they'll uh, they'll put you in touch with us. Um, and then before we jump off, I'm just going to share my screen again really quickly. I think we had a slide at the end um, giving out some contact stuff, right? More G2 yeah. goodness. So Claudia will drop these uh, URLs in the chat, but um, G2 University, awesome. We're going to do these office hours once a month, and we're open to um, anybody who wants to chat on anything specific. If you really want to get in the weeds with specific integrations, we'd be happy to dedicate an office hours to that. 
Um, if you just, if you are not using G2 intent data today, or you don't know what, you know, package you're on, or you don't have access, you can always request a demo. Um, somebody, you know, you guys know how it works in SDR, somebody like that will reach out to you and you'll go down that journey. And we're always here to, to help you, um, if you can't figure out who has admin access to your account and stuff like that. Um, and Caitlin, thank you for that idea for an, e that's a great, you're giving us like demand gen ideas right here on this call. So yeah, I love that idea for an asset. I think a lot of people would find that useful. And we are coming up on 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, thank you all so much. This was fun. I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it. And uh, we'll see you next month. And if you need anything before that, you know where to find all of us.